Imagine yourself in the late Cretaceous, about 68 million years ago, wandering through the sprawling, open landscapes of what is now North America. Suddenly, heavy rhythmic thuds reverberate through the air. Looking up, squinting against the glaring sun, a vast shadow descends, dimming the daylight as your jaw drops in awe. This is no mythological creature or figment of your imagination. You are witnessing Quetzalcoatlus Northropi, the largest flying animal to have ever graced our planet. Join us as we journey back through the epochs to uncover the story of this majestic giant. Our understanding of the Quetzalcoatlus Northropi begins in the late 1970s, a period of significant advancements in paleontology. In Big Bend National Park, Texas, an area rich with geological wonders and fossil records, a geology student named Douglas A. Lawson made a groundbreaking discovery. While conducting fieldwork, Lawson stumbled upon something extraordinary, enormous fossilized bones partially buried in the Cretaceous rocks. But these weren't just any bones, they were so massive that they excited Lawson, leading him to believe that they belonged to an unknown species of massive pterosaur. The site soon became a hotbed of excitement and activity. Further excavations under the guidance of leading paleontologists revealed a creature of mythical proportions. Its wingspan was estimated to reach an astonishing 10 to 11 meters, easily rivaling that of early aircraft. Lawson's discovery was named Quetzalcoatlus Northropi in a dual homage. The name of the genus pays tribute to the Aztec feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl, evoking the creature's majestic and fabled nature. The species named Northropi honors the founder of the Northrop Corporation, John Northrop, renowned for his drive in designing large tailless aircraft, drawing a parallel between this ancient behemoth and modern feats in aviation engineering. Now, this discovery was more than just a new entry into the fossil record. It forced scientists to reevaluate their understanding of flight mechanisms in prehistoric animals. The existence of such a massive creature capable of flight challenged existing theories about the physical limits and necessary adaptions for powered flight in massive animals. The massive pterosaur became a symbol of the incredible diversity and adaptability of life on Earth, prompting new lines of inquiry into the life and environment of the late Cretaceous period. It also shed light on the evolutionary journey of pterosaurs, a group whose history was, until then, not fully appreciated in the narrative of life on our planet. Quetzalcoatlus Northropi was a marvel of natural engineering, a creature that seemed to defy the very laws of physics with its existence. Its silhouette against the late Cretaceous sky would have been nothing short of awe-inspiring. Despite its colossal proportions, Quetzalcoatlus maintained a surprisingly light frame, a feat made possible by its hollow bones. This characteristic, shared with birds and theropod dinosaurs, allowed for an optimal strength to weight ratio, crucial for powering flight. These bones, while lightweight, were incredibly strong, capable of supporting its massive wings without compromising its ability to take to the skies. The flight mechanics in such a large creature have puzzled scientists for decades. It's believed that Quetzalcoatlus utilized its vast, powerful wings in a manner similar to modern large birds, taking advantage of thermal updrafts to soar across great distances with minimal effort. This proposed flight strategy, based on theoretical models, aerodynamic principles, and comparisons with both modern birds and other pterosaurs, suggests that Quetzalcoatlus was an efficient long-distance flyer, capable of traversing continental expanses in search of food and suitable nesting grounds. The anatomy of Quetzalcoatlus was a testament to evolutionary ingenuity. Its muscular system, particularly the powerful muscles attached to the breastbone, facilitated rigorous flapping that was required for taking off. These muscles, analogous to the pectoral muscles found in birds, would have been crucial for generating the lift needed to elevate its massive frame into the air. The head and beak of this giant pterosaur was uniquely adapted to its particular feeding habits. Based on the skull and neck structure, paleontologists hypothesize that its feeding behavior may have been similar to that of modern-day storks or pelicans. This suggests a versatile and opportunistic diet that could have included small terrestrial animals, insects, fish, and possibly carrion. However, the exact nature of its diet remains a topic of ongoing research and debate. Another feature of Quetzalcoatlus was its large eyes, which would have provided keen vision, an essential trait for spotting prey from high altitudes. This visual acuity, possibly combined with an acute sense of smell, 
would have made them adept hunters, capable of detecting carrion or spotting small moving objects over vast stretches of land or water. The world of the late Cretaceous period, approximately 68 to 66 million years ago, was a place of immense diversity and dynamic ecosystems. It was within this vibrant prehistoric backdrop the Quetzalcoatlus called home. During this period, what is now North America was split by the Western Interior Seaway, a vast expanse of water that divided the continent into two landmasses, Laramidia to the west and Appalachia to the east. Quetzalcoatlus thrived along the shores of this seaway and in the nearby coastal plains, regions that offered abundant resources for a creature of its ecological niche. These areas were characterised by a mix of environments, from arid deserts to open plains to lush forests and swamps, all teeming with various life forms. The diversity of these habitats provided the pterosaur with ample opportunities for feeding, nesting and migration. Adept at both predation and scavenging, it exerted profound influence on its ecosystem. Its unique role shaped the dynamic of prey populations and contributed to the ecological equilibrium of its time. The late Cretaceous climate was warmer than today's, with higher levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This greenhouse effect led to a relatively warm and humid climate across much of the planet, including habitats of Quetzalcoatlus. Such conditions would have supported lush vegetation and a wide array of life, from dinosaurs to other reptiles to early mammals and to a diverse array of invertebrates. The warmer temperatures and abundant food sources would have been ideal for allowing the giant to migrate across long distances following seasonal changes. Now, while much remains unknown about the nesting habitats of Quetzalcoatlus, paleontologists speculate that these massive flyers likely sought out secluded elevated areas for breeding. Cliffs, rocky outposts, or dense forests near coastal regions may have provided ideal locations, offering protection from ground-dwelling predators and easy access to hunting territories. Like modern birds and reptiles, Quetzalcoatlus probably laid eggs, possibly in shallow scrapes or rudimentary nests. The warm climate of the late Cretaceous would have aided in incubation, while the rich biodiversity of their habitat ensured ample food for both parents and hatchlings. Its existence shaped and was shaped by the dynamic world it inhabited, a world poised on the brink of one of the most significant extinction events in Earth's history. The reign of Quetzalcoatlus came to a cataclysmic close around 66 million years ago as a result of the devastating Cretaceous Paleogene event, which altered the course of Earth's biological history. For Quetzalcoatlus, and indeed all life at the time, the impact of this event was profound and irreversible. The primary catalyst for this mass extinction was a colossal asteroid impact near what is now the Yucatan Peninsula, creating the Chicxulub Crater. This impact was of such magnitude that it triggered a series of environmental disasters, including massive tsunamis and wildfires, and ejected vast quantities of debris into the atmosphere. Simultaneously, volcanic activity, particularly in the Deccan Traps of present-day India, compounded the environmental stress. Over thousands of years, the eruption spewed vast quantities of lava and released greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, contributing to climate change and acidifying oceans. This one-two punch of asteroid impact and volcanic activity created a hostile environment characterised by rapid climate shifts and the collapse of ecosystems. Sunlight blocking debris plunged the world into darkness, causing a sharp drop in temperatures and halting photosynthesis. This environmental catastrophe triggered a collapse of the food web, decimating plant life and herbivores and ultimately impacting apex predators like Quetzalcoatlus. The cooling and obscured skies also hindered its ability to use thermal currents for soaring, while the diminished food supply made survival increasingly difficult. As the ecosystems unraveled, Quetzalcoatlus, along with non-avian dinosaurs and numerous other species, faced inevitable extinction. The extinction of the Quetzalcoatlus symbolises the end of an era where megafauna dominated the skies, sea and lands. This majestic pterosaur was a truly extraordinary animal that deserves to be remembered as one of the most impressive creatures that has ever roamed the earth, and its demise is a cold reminder that extinction is not the exception, but rather the norm. Thanks for joining me, my fellow apes, on this expedition into the extinct. If this glimpse into bygone biodiversity intrigued you, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell as we continue to explore more of the fascinating world that once was.